Hello and welcome to the Olympic Sports Centre Gymnasium here in the city of Changzhou for the second session on quarterfinals day at the Victor China Open, the 20th event on the HSBC BWF World Tour and the fourth of the four Super 1000 events, the highest tier of tournament on the World Tour, apart from the World Tour Finals, which will take place in Hangzhou in December. And this is the magnificent trophy that the players will be playing for at those World Tour Finals, which are just for the top eight players and pairs in each of the five disciplines. Determined, of course, by the results from all World Tour tournaments throughout the year. Well, second session on quarterfinals day, as I say, and we'll be starting with women's doubles and the World Championship silver medalists, Rahayu and Ramadanti of Indonesia, up against a pair who've been in seven finals this year, Bekana and Lee Sohi of Korea. Then women's singles and a repeat of the Olympic semi-final. Herbin Zhao, the left-hander, up against the Olympic gold medalist, Chen Yufei. And then it's men's singles and it's a repeat of the recent World Championship quarter-final. Shi Yu Chi, the beaten finalist at the All England Championships earlier this year, up against the World Championship silver medalist, Kodai Naraoka of Japan. And then we have men's doubles and the world champions, Kang and Sol from Korea, up against Fikri and Mulana, last year's All England champions. Then we finish with men's singles and two former world champions, the gold medalists from last year, Victor Axelson, who's also the reigning Olympic champion, up against the world championship gold medalist from 2021, Lo Ken Yu of Singapore. Well, with women's doubles being our first quarterfinal in this evening's session, a chance for us to look at the draw. And when you look at the quarterfinal stage, only four different nationalities, the four pairs from Japan, two from China, one from Indonesia and Korea. And so it makes it the least diverse of all five disciplines. You can see that the defending champions, Chen Chen Cheng and Jia Yifeng, the four-time world champions, uh, they are safely through to the semi-final. All the other three quarter-finals in the women's doubles will be played uh, this evening. So we're going to concentrate on the bottom section of the draw with Rahayu and Aramadanti, the world championship silver medalists up against Bekana and Lee Sohi, the number two seeds from Korea. Well, I'm Jill Clark, delighted to say that sitting alongside me is former Danish head coach, Seymour Pedersen. Uh, we're just waiting for the players uh, to get ready and the spectacular light show that we've been enjoying, Steam, but it's a good lineup for this evening's programme, isn't it? Fantastic lineup, lots of uh, interesting matches, um, and not least this women's doubles that we're about to watch now. Yes, I couldn't agree more. This, I think, is fascinating uh, because uh, these two pairs played against each other in the third round of the recent World Championships. And, of course, with the Indonesians going on to take the silver medal, they obviously won in Copenhagen. And as you can see, it's quite comfortable, 12 and 14. But it is the Koreans who have the overall advantage from the three previous encounters. I believe that the World Championship silver medalists have won the top of the point and have chosen ends. And I think that's extremely sensible. And there was a stage when the players and pairs were not choosing ends when they won the toss of the coin, but every big arena has a bit of a drift. And therefore, I simply didn't understand why players weren't choosing ends first. Whether you want to start the good end or whether you want to finish the good end, assuming it goes to three games, is a preference. Uh, but it certainly makes a difference. Apriani Rahayu is 25 years of age now from Kandari in South East Sulawesi. 163 points to point foot four. And uh, they are uh, down from their career high as a pair of four. Now, as you saw, she has been as high as three with her former partner, Gracia Polly, with whom she won the Olympic gold medal. 
So to City Fadia Silva Ramadanti, who's making her first appearance here in Changdo. Uh, she is 22 years of age from Sibanong in Nabogo Regency in West Java. They, in the very first round, put out the number eight seeds, Kitty Harakun and Prajongjai, coming from a game down to beat the Thai combination. And then they beat Korean opposition, Hyong Na Eun and Kim Hae Jong, in the second round. So to the number two seeds, and this is Bae Ka Na, who will turn 23 later this month. And uh, they are enjoying their consecutively as world number twos but they are number one on the race to the world tour finals Lee So Hee is the older of the two Koreans at the age of 29 from Ulsan and she has the remarkable Ready distinction of play. having been world number two with three different partners not only her partner of today but also Chan Ye Na and also Shin's young Chan uh, they, in the very first round, uh, beat Li Wen Mei and Li Xuan Xuan, and then Vivian Hu and Lim Chiu Xian of Malaysia. Both of their matches, as you can see, in two straight games. But as I was telling you, the Korean pair seven finals this year, which is really quite remarkable. Chu Xuan Yan from China is our umpire for this one and Kevin Ban from the United States of America is the service judge. Now of their seven finals they've won three titles in Germany that was a 300 at the Malaysian Masters a 500 and they won the Indonesian Open uh, which so far is their only Super 1000 title. Lee Kyung Won, the Korean coach. And Ng Hian, the Indonesian women's doubles coach. And my goodness, what a difference he's made to the women's doubles team over recent years. Number two seeds, Bae Kana and Lee So Hee, far side of the court, up against the World Championship silver medalists, Rahayu and Ramadanti. Just wide. Now, the interesting thing, I was uh, telling you, Steen, uh, about the Koreans in seven finals from 14 tournaments uh, this year, which is quite remarkable. Half of the tournaments they played, they reached the final. But what is interesting, this is only the, oh, what a wonderful serve. This is only their third Super 1000 event. The first two Super 1000 events they played, they both times reached the final. I was telling you about the Indonesian Open, but they reached the final of the All England as well. So a very, very good record in these high tier of tournaments. Do you recall the second Stop round? So it was actually a third Two. round encounter when these two pairs met at the World Championships in Copenhagen. I only noticed the result, and um, that was significant because it was uh, a two uh, straight game win, and it was rather convincing, uh, having never beaten them before. Yeah. So I noticed that, um, that there was something brewing there. Found uh, form for the Indonesians or some uh, problems, problems from the Koreans, and we, we saw afterwards that it was indeed the Indonesians who had found form again. This is a good rally. Yeah, 
super rally. Yeah, you make a very good point there, Steam, because the Indonesians at the start of the year, the first four, five World Tour events, they reached at least the quarter-final. Then, of course, there was that injury at the Swiss Open to Aramadanti, ankle injury. Um, and they've they struggled since then until they got to the World Championships. Yeah, I think also um, Rahayu had problems with her shoulder in the uh, beginning of the year. But they really uh, played well in Copenhagen. Oh, that's good play. That is very good play. Five, so continuing uh, on what we saw from the first round when we watched them play uh, the Koreans against Li Wen Mei and um, Yu Shun Shun. Yeah, she was very active, uh, more active than I've seen her on the front court. I don't know if they <laughs> that's something they've emphasized in practice, the Koreans, but I can't help thinking about Che Yu Jung in the mix as well, where she's more adventurous than I've seen her on the front court um, in terms of killing the shots. I think the same goes for Becca Na here in the women's doubles. Oh, and that's well left. It's wide and long. Now, if you haven't been with us earlier in the week, then I can tell you that the drift, lengthways drift, yeah, the shuttle is flying faster towards the far end of the court as we all look down during the rallies. Yeah, that's quite significant. More significant Six. today? You, you were watching some of the earlier quarterfinals? Um, perhaps not more, but at least the same. Yeah. At least the same. I watched the only other women's double quarterfinal that's been played, and uh, Fukushima and Hirota lost to the... Uh, Time world champions for Shima Hirota. They, they didn't choose ends in the beginning. The and Japanese pair didn't cho no, choose ends. No, they elected to uh, either serve or receive, I can't recall that. And Three, immediately Chen and Jia elected to start on the near side here. Yeah. And they're four times world champions. Four times, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's a good defensive shot. Lovely from Ramadanti. And a big smile from her partner. <laughs> yeah. This is a beauty from Ramadanti. And look how she's moving forward as well. Had that shuttle come back, she Thank was you. ready and waiting. Yeah, Thank that's, you. That's a great uh, story about her smile there. There it was again uh, with uh, Rahayu. Hopefully that can be a trend in badminton. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, it was Rahayu's former partner, Gracia Poli, with whom she won the Olympics. He was telling her how she got really fed up with Gao Ling. He used to yeah. just smile the whole time that she was on court and it really annoyed her. So for a high she should do the same thing. Five, and when they faced six. Chinese opposition in the final, they met two smiling faces <laughs> <Yes>. from <laughs> Chen Ching Chen and Jai Fan. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So it's, it's also a little, a little bit in line with the former men's singles world champion, Lo Kim Yu from yeah. uh, Singapore, who, uh, yeah, He's struggling. He's struggling a little bit, leading up to his world championship. But but he's a fantastic um, athlete.
speed in my opinion. He says as well, well, grumbling over a defeat won't help me, so I might as well enjoy it and, and smile and take the positives with me. And, and I think that's, um, that's a good attitude if you can find the balance and it's still be eager and motivated. I think it's a, a great attitude and, and it, it's a joy to watch look in you because he always conducts himself with such great sportsmanship. Yes, I agree. Yeah, she didn't attack that serve at all, just let it drop and then lifted it. Whoa, that came off the frame. Good rally. Oh, that's brilliant. Lee so he. Well, she got the lucky net court, but she earned her own luck there. Look how she reached for that one. Amazing. It's actually Lee so he's second quarter final here in Chantal. That was the last edition of this event back in 2019. She was a fourth finalist for Shin Xiang Chan. Lost out to that women's doubles pair you've just been talking about, Fukushima and Hirota. see some long rallies oh, this is certainly living up to expectations yeah it's good rallies i thought um, i immediately interpreted on the first two serves i saw from the koreans when they flicked i said okay maybe they watch some video and seeing the indonesians put pressure on their service and so on but then we saw that where Rahai just let it um, drop more or less and, and, and lift it so um, i think the Indonesians' plan here is to to uh, stay in control of the rallies if they can, and if not, then play a controlled defense and go for the uh, for the counter attack like that. That's wonderful. Lovely change of pace from Ramadanti. Six nine. There's the change of pace. Force the lo loose shot and therefore the easy kill. Well, perhaps it wasn't that easy to kill, but she made it look easy. I'm interested to see if, if that in fact is the plan that the Koreans are going to do with it because I feel it's a good plan that. Both Indonesians, we alluded to that in the former partnership, both of them have a good eye for the game and they are quick on their feet as well, so they can sort of spot the possibilities. Uh, Ten, but six. the Koreans, they've, they've done uh, reasonably well, even that they lost the last match in, in the straight game, so, so they've done well uh, also. A little bit easier. There was the flick again. It's easier playing up against the drift, don't have to, have to be as careful in the defense. Oh. So to the mid-game interval, the number two seeds from Korea, Baekha Na and Lee So Hee, with a five-point advantage.
Iya, iya. Iya, kok. Well, I noticed that Lee So He has got her right knee heavily strapped, but I think that was uh, the case in Copenhagen as well. Do you remember that, Steve? I don't, I don't recall it. Uh, I, 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 I don't think I saw them before they lost to um, to the Indonesians, but I noticed in the first match here at some point I think she looked like she was protecting it a little bit. When, uh, it's a good drop. Landing. That's the problem with those pushes Twelve, from that, six. this near side yeah. of the court. Liable to go long. But all credit to these two because they played with great patience as well here in the yeah. opening. She's made a number of errors, uh, Rahayu, six. from uh, below the tape the soft pace shot from the Koreans. This was a little bit further from the net, but, but also some real close where she's tried to play the net. I think that's also because of the mental pressure. She knows that it's difficult lifting with the confidence here. Oh, well taken. Yeah, well anticipated by Bae Khan up. Aren't they the Koreans? from below the tape on the front court. 15, I think if I were the seven. Indonesians, I would try to lift really, really high. We've seen other players try that solution, playing this uh, end where the shuttle flies faster. Days at the moment, Ryan, no. <laughs> but uh, again, the Koreans are, are super alert on the midcourt area, and a lot of chances occur there because the Indonesians try to to find the solutions pretty much without using the backcourt. That lift was woefully short, so is that, and it got what it deserved. Rahim's feet are oh, when she plays that smash. Yeah, that was mid court area. Yeah. Shuttle early at the front of the court. There. 
made all the difference. tuned in to where the gap was. That's great awareness from Liso He. Yes. At that time it became too obvious that it was going to be uh, anything else but a smash. Ramadanti moving just as uh, Lisa he was hitting the shot. Super rally. Attacking play, switching from one pair to the other. Longest rally so far beats the previous longest rally by one <laughs> shot. <laughs> Two points away from the open game for the number two seeds. play the shuttle nine game point opportunities for Bekar Nahr and Lisa Hu. oh I like that defense from Ramadanti Ahead, how on earth did she miss that? She was there. Just trying to make it a little too steep. Exactly.
its own in game, maybe beyond the Indonesian pair, or so stranger things have happened. But I think this is important, Steen, that they, they're playing themselves into the rallies, into the match. I think so too. Not necessarily the last year where they have a net roller, but the long rally there, it seemed like they found the length a bit better, and that could be important both for a second game, especially for an eventual third game. Yeah. Right now, the Korean is going to focus on just securing the first one here. Yeah. And we can see what's happened when they play a little bit above the tape level, the Koreans, then the Indonesians are at them, following up. And Rahayu, she's been like night and day, night below the tape and day above. Yeah. So, on their fifth game point opportunity. Bekana and then so he finally converts on game number one. 21 15. What a good opening game. Some terrific rallies. 23 minutes. And the number two seeds win the game to the good. World Tour Finals trophy on display. Not that I think the players need extra motivation to qualify for the World Tour Finals. Second game, level. Everybody wants to qualify for, especially in the Olympic qualification yeah. season. Good extra points at stake. Well, I get the impression that the Koreans are quite happy with the way things are going because Lee Kyung Wong came on for her usual 20 to 30 <laughs> seconds and then disappeared again. I, I thought about it and the more I think about it, I, I kind of like it because love. it leaves time for the players to discuss in between and to get their head around what's being said and so on. If you talk for the entire two minutes, mm. Is it, is it enough time for the players to get their head around what, what is actually the, the goal? Maybe she could have stayed there and so on, but I mean, if you have nothing more to say, the players go back to business. Incidentally, is making her third appearance here in Changdo and a third quarter final. And in fact, in 2018, she went on to reach the semi final with Gracia Poligny. So she obviously likes playing in this arena. Yeah, lucky net call for me, so he.
So what's your thoughts on the Indonesian team? Have they just got to be more proactive? No, they're, they're going to continue the same as they did, I think. They're going to try and, and put pressure on the backcourt player and move further forward, both of them looking for the opportunity, knowing that it's going to be difficult for the Koreans to play the backcourt. So the, the worst thing for the Indonesians here in the second game is if, if the Koreans find uh, a touch playing with the team. So I think we're going to see them try the same style and really put pressure on in the flat game, but, but maintain the uh, control and the balance. And they can use the full court much better here. Yeah. Uh, good pressure on the backcourt player. So for, for the Koreans, uh, what do I do? I, I think try and put pressure on the uh, low serve so you have a fast paced shot there that's a good play five three and, uh, had she had she uh, hit it Bekana, she would have uh, risked counter attacking uh, shot counter attacking defense so it's a good plan Obviously, the Indonesians are, are uh, super quick on their feet and uh, a good eye for the game, but, but the Koreans, they're not slow either. So they also have a solid defense. So, that's going to be a design factor. That's going to be see. Maybe the choice of ends. Do you know, I was just about to say that. I absolutely appreciate what you're saying about the, the Indonesian pair trying to move the Koreans more. I can see that, but also they're being a lot more proactive with yeah, yeah. hitting down. Yeah. They're wanting to attack, they're hunting the shuttle. I felt in the opening game they were letting the shuttle come to them, which is why they were having to take it below tape height yeah. sometimes at the front of the court. No, I, I think I, I saw the same glimpses yeah. in, in the first game where they wanted to maintain the attack look for the chance because they couldn't they knew they couldn't just uh, fire away full uh, power smashes and, and get out of balance the koreans defense is, is so good um so I, I think they tried to do the same thing in the first game i just feel that the koreans play clever and, and and use the the full court so if if the koreans are, are going to lift here freely um to, to uh, the indonesians they're, they're going to take that and, and try and, and convert but if the Koreans are going to try and, and um, stay in control, I think we're going to see them chase the backcourt player. What happened there? Uh, well, it was a good Seven return of serve. Eight, and six. Lee so he was expecting Bekana to step forward and take it. And Bekana was expecting Lee so he to intercept it. Great shot. Well worked. What a super rally. Nine, six. 
demonstrates the uh, fundamental principle, in my opinion, in um, an arena that's fast played. And it's going to drift alongside the court. Do not lose your balance. Because then it gets very, very difficult to uh, control your shots. Whether you have to give it a little bit extra playing up against the drift or reduce the power a little bit to make it stay inside. Nobody pounced on it. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness me. Oh, and it's just long. The flat fast exchanges there. That was a pinball machine exchange. Yes. <laughs> that is well judged and well left. Look at that. Magnificently at the front court. Yeah. We know the Koreans, they're not afraid to, to work if they get the chance. They're not afraid to work. Pushed it wrong. So it's a three-point advantage here in the second game for Apriani Rashayu and Sidney Fabia Silva Oramadanti. And this really is bubbling up into an absolutely intriguing women's doubles. Deduce that uh, the Koreans are a little more concerned now because Lee Kyung Won used all of her allotted time to talk to her players. Eleven, eight, play. Adjustments are needed. in front of the Indonesians is Beck and Lee at the moment. It's actually uh, succeeding. If 
they can't play it in front of them. They uh, try to put a uh, cross in. So the Indonesians, they need to step even further forward in both of them. So there is no room in front of them. Have you noticed that Lisa he has got extra strapping on him? He's put on a bit of white strapping. Uh, since the interval here? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and it makes me think also, if you're correct, that um, she was wearing it um, at the World Championships, then she might have suffered uh, an injury going into the World Championships. So both our theories could be right that the Indonesians were in fact finding form, but also the Koreans perhaps have been a little bit injured. Yeah. Gosh, she's working hard, Liz. Liz or he. But they're, uh, they're playing well for the Koreans at the moment. Oh, that's my mind. Yeah. <laughs> she holds her head. <laughs> All that hard work. It's Liz or he. At the end of it, yeah, it's very long. Amazed that how severe the uh, drift is. I felt that Rahayu was really stretching forward, make a big effort physically yeah. to take that backhand as high as she possibly could. Well, she's also standing far back. From an she was flicking, uh, she would definitely want to come forward. I think she can move extra forward. To Rahayu? Yeah. That's the back court down there on the surface. Oh, he yeah. shut down Mekana. Knocked over but by the powerful please. smash. No wonder, <laughs> yeah. no wonder she's smiling. Had that been boxing, she would have had 10 seconds to get up and be <laughs> ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lovely, they can see the funny side of it. at the moment. Delightful block. This is an important rally. It's going long. Yeah. 14. Super well played rally. Textbook uh, material. In the battle right now. The Koreans are just about um, getting the hang of it on this near side here where the Indonesians struggle to sort of refine their strategy. They've opened up a two-point cushion, the Indonesians.
rally again. And a slightly fortunate net ball from Ramadanti. Quality shots in these rallies, I can see. Yeah, this is fantastic practice. Oh, oh, really got it back to Bekana. Oh, look at that. Wonderful images. Both the Indonesians leaping at the yeah. same time, mirroring each other. Well, the Indonesians have opened up a three-point cushion that they had at the mid-game interval. Slight confusion between the two Koreans. And is this the decisive move in the second game by the Indonesians? Four point advantage now. Shot from this lady, Miso He. Basically, only uh, trying to lift to the first line, more or less, but they're still able to uh, stand their ground in the defense. And then get the uh, opportunities themselves. This is a good comeback. Three straight points in the line and one point in it.
Oh, that's a good smash. Three-point advantage and three points away from forcing a third and deciding game. Missed it. It's just wide by Whisker. That is so far. We haven't had a challenge in this match yet, have we, still? Yeah. Deficit reduced to just one solitary point. And back level. What on earth was Ramadanti trying to do there? I think Kalnar are alert to it anyway. Exactly. They have to lift once in a while to make use of the full court the Indonesians. Because they put too much pressure on themselves. Back, below the tape. Back level. when she played that shot, they can't out. Shuttle going in a downward direction, the Indonesians, and their reward is two game point opportunities. confirming that scoreline of one game apiece. Wonderful attacking women's doubles, both pairs vying for the attacking play. Closing down the nets, Rahayu to make the final kill and confirmation that it's one game all and we will be treated to a third and deciding game. Yeah, nanggung, yeah. Berubahnya tiap 
Mereka bukan yang jadi yang yang sebelas kepindah ke terakhir ini. Dia nggak katanya tak ditanggungi. Jadi mereka nggak nggak mau angkat bawa. So the umpire calls for the start of the third and deciding game. Rahayu and Ramadan for the Indonesia nearest to us, having fought back from a game deficit against the number two seeds, Bekar Na and Lee Sun Hee. Softer smash and that completely threw the defence of Lee So He. Two hours have Stubby elapsed and uh, haven't really noticed or reading a book where you sort of forget Two, what's one. around you. I, I just think this is so interesting to see the the chess game within each rally. Yeah. Indonesians 15 points in the first game, but that's a little misleading because they were much further adrift. So what are they coming up one. with here? side getting closer and closer to the edge of her coaching chair there. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to be careful. Yeah, oh, this is a good start by the Koreans, Five, isn't it? One. Mind you, they had a 6-1 lead in the opening game, didn't they? And again, I, I feel the Indonesians, they uh, make the court that they're hitting to very, very small. The second game, even though they lost it, they, they managed to play a bigger part of the uh, opponent's court. Oh, my goodness, that's superb from Ramadante. Backhand smash that gets the net cord. Take a look at this. Look at that. The timing was superb. was deflected by the net cord Ramadanti. Oh. Look at that. And severe pressure. No pressure. 
panic at all. Short. Fantastic rally. That's the miss over. Six. Three. So he as backup player on so many occasions in this match. We also saw him in the first match. I don't know that. He's uh, the first one out. The role that she had, she played with Shin. We also discussed it. That she's taken on in the earlier stages of this partnership. She was more the front court player. Yes. So they're tailoring uh, the uh, preferred formation as to their opponents, which is uh, fantastic. Oh, well taken. Yes. So he. <laughs> she was out of her chair there. That's a good interception, first of all, and then the kill from Lee So he. So we shouldn't be surprised by such wonderful play from a player that's got two world championship medals a silver and a bronze with her former partner. idea from execution because Lee so he had played one from the net and then backed out straight to play the smash from her deep forehand corner there was a big gap across court the long
wishing on the service return. I think the Indonesians pretty much want that. Much better to just guide it to one of the sides below the tape. Every point the Indonesians can score on this uh, side here is super valuable, of course, when they change ends. They've already done much better than the first game. Yeah. So much for my theory, there was the push again and it worked brilliantly. So uh, now, uh, hang on. Serve before the receiver is ready. Now, I have to say, I don't particularly like that. The receiver should get ready quicker. to the change of ends at the mid-game interval. Ends. And it is the Koreans, Big Han Ar and Lee so he who have a four-point advantage. An hour and five minutes into the match. Seven, the advantage to the number two seeds from Korea. And I think the first three or four points out of the chain of ends are going to be vital. That is fantastic. And what an important rally.
and just mistimed it. And one senses that time is running out for the Indonesians. And the cushion becomes too big, I think, for the Indonesians to catch up because the Koreans are not playing bad. No. So it's not like they're scoring points in big streaks. Well, they're calling the doctor. The Indonesians, what's that for? Is it a blood injury? Cold spray, I wonder. She points to her finger, the umpire here. Um. But, I mean, can't we have the announcement? To, uh, have the microphone, to the referee on court, please, or something like that. Yeah. Doctor required blood injury yeah. or just injury or whatever. She has her own cool spray. Um, Lisa he she's just put cool spray on her knee. Yeah, good for her. That's what we've been urging the players to do. So that we don't have to have medical timeouts. Yeah, it's some cold spray. Oh, she was going to spray the leg. It's the back that's the problem. Uh. She wants the leg down as well. Yeah, only not one of the dot deputy referees in attendance as well. Six-point advantage. 14-8 for the Koreans. Baekhan R and Lee Sohee. This play resumes. Yeah, well played. Great. That, that lift in the middle of the rally, that, that was what I feel the Indonesians have been lacking on this near side of the court when they've played that. They haven't had that in their game to the same extent as the Koreans. That's a great interception. 16, yeah, you've got to hand it to the Koreans here, Steen, haven't you? I mean, yep. they've, they've played such a solid, deciding game. And a clever. Clever game, utilised their skills. That it never hurt anyone to have a solid defence as long as you had other weapons to 17, tag along with it. And surely there's no way back now for the Indonesians. No, I don't think so. Two points away from the semi-final for the number two seeds from Korea. And in all honesty, Steen, I think that medical timeout affected the Indonesians more than it affected the Koreans.
with the look of disappointment with Rana Dante says it all because it is now 10 match point opportunities for Bake Hana and Lisa Hu. Only needed the one. 21-10 in the deciding game to the Korean pair, Bae Kha and Lee So-hee. A match lasting an hour and 15 minutes. And a match in which we had not one single disputed call. So apart from some brilliant badminton, Russia. And through to an 11th semi-final of the year in their 15th tournament. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Very well. Yeah. And the conditions well. I think we're on court again right now. I'd like to see the match one more time. It was, it was such a good match. It certainly was, but there is confirmation of how Abek Hana and Lee So-hee, the number two seeds, have reached the semi-final. 21-15, 18-21, 21-10 in the deciding game against the World Championship silver medalists, Rahayu and Ramadanti. So welcome back to Changzhou, quarter-finals day here at the Victor China Open. Second session of the day, and after that, uh, 